Well, it's better to be here than uh, where the guys are standing. It's uh, 25, 30 knots of breeze, and it's uh, right on the nose. So the, the waves are uh, quite steep and high, and uh, it's soaking wet on deck. So uh, this is a good spot for the time being. But the best thing is that the other guys are all behind us. So uh, the other competition, so that's probably the best view I can have. Well, I mean, when you say a long way behind you, your lead is looking really impressive right now. I mean, just talk us through how it is you've built that up. Well, I think we were just going, uh, we, we're going just fine. And uh, last night was uh, quite windy. We had the right sail combinations. We made the right changes. And uh, yeah, the boat is just, uh, is rippings, like we say. I think especially the new mainsail helps a lot. We were never happy with the first one we had, and the second one is just, uh, yeah, it just feels way better. The boat is accelerating. And today, again, uh, we've made some good calls. So uh, yeah, we slowly but surely have uh, sailing away from the guys, so that's uh, that's that's quite nice. A very happy Bauer Becking on board Team Brunel, and welcome to Volvo Ocean Race headquarters in Alicante. Leg six is underway, and today we're also going to be hearing from Turn the Tide and Plastic with Dee Kafari, plus David Witt on Sun Hunkai Scallywag, as well as hearing from Conrad Colren, our offshore racing expert, about what are some of the obstacles coming up in this leg. Firstly, let me say hello to everybody watching at the Helsinki International Boat Show. But first, let's dial into the race and have a look at how the racing is unfolding so far. It's Hong Kong to Auckland. It's over 6,000 nautical miles, and we are still in the very early stages. But right now, the fleet have been seen tucking up into that leeward shadow of Taiwan, and for good reason. The current, as you can see, is helping them, but the wind going the opposite direction and creating a really heavy sea state. And it's all about Team Brunel right now. They are leading the pack round the southern tip of Taiwan and show no signs of giving that up at all. However, just behind them, it's Di Kafari struggling on Turn the Tide on Plastic, and just in between maneuvers, she took the time to talk to us and, well, give us the lowdown on that difficult start. Oh, well, we had a shocker coming out from uh, around Hong Kong Island. Uh, we didn't get any of the lifts the others had. Ended up doing loads more maneuvers that cost us dearly. So had a deficit to make up. But we went straight out into some pretty windy upwind conditions and we managed to close the gap a little and then hold station on everybody. We're now all currently as a fleet just south of Taiwan, um, passing through the wind shadow. And... Um, we've managed to close the gap even more. So we're kind of with everybody, which has put us in a much better place because we've still got 5,000 miles to go to get to um, Auckland. And in that 5,000 miles, we've got a lot of big decisions. There's the doldrums to get through. There's lots of islands, atolls and reefs to negotiate. And then ahead at the moment, there's cyclonic weather that we need to uh, have a look at. And that's obviously ruining any trade winds. So um, it's very unclear how it's going to pan out, but that means that there's lots of opportunities. And when we're this close, we can see all the other boats when we're on deck. When we're this close, it gives us opportunities. So all is not lost. We're still fighting. D. Kafari on board Turn the Tide on Plastic, mentioning there a few of the obstacles that are still to come in this leg. So to help us decide which ones that we need to pay attention to, we've got Conrad Coleman, solo offshore sailor. So Conrad, let, let's have a look. The weather, the strategy, what is coming up? What are these sailors going to be obsessing about? Well, everybody was saying that this might be an upwind leg, and I, I've got good news for them because it looks like they're going to be sailing upwind for the next sort of 12, max 18 hours, and then they're into the good stuff. Well, it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that, but <laughs> let, let's have a look. Let's have a look. All right. So basically, this is the, the weather picture at the moment. They are da down here next to next to Taiwan, and we've got a high pressure zone that is firing these upwind conditions into them right now. There's another uh, high pressure zone over here. There's a little uh, tropical depression that's sort of causing us meteorologists a little bit of uh, little bit of stress at the moment. But basically, their route, they're here, they're trying to get down here. Is that going to be A to B? What's your bet, Niall? <laughs> no. No chance. They're here, they're going to sail up around Okinawa, they're going to bury into a high pressure zone, and then finally they're going to fire their way back down, um, back down to the Solomon Islands. So, lots coming up, and frankly, the sailors and indeed you fans out there following this race are going to be have to, have to be a little bit patient because Auckland's down here, they're going to be sailing up this way. So, you know, hang on. Uh, and it's going to be interesting because Pascal Bidigori has been talking about the fact that these next 12 hours is, is going to be a, a crucial moment in the, in the upcoming league. Do they, do they fire away north to China immediately? 
and sort of commit themselves to that northern route, um, or can they try and cut the corner? It's gonna be interesting to see, but I've got my bets on them getting really up close and intimate with Okinawa. Let's have a look. So, this is what it's gonna look like in, um, on the 10th of February, so this Saturday, lots of action coming up this weekend. Remember, again, they're down here next to Taiwan, and we expect them to be doing this sort of big loopy action um, up in, into the archipelago by Okinawa, and that is all driven by this trough uh, that's building next to this high pressure zone. So this, this is the big action here, and that's gonna be pushing the boats up this way. Now, 24 hours ahead, there's one new feature coming into play, and that is this, this trough uh, built between these, these two high pressure zones. You can see this one extending here off the coast of, of China, uh, and, then, and then this big one that's gonna be growing over the next, next couple of days. Now, as to how this, th this transition happens in the middle, it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out in the fleet, because boats at the back might be getting these, these favorable conditions earlier, and may actually be able to bridge the gap and, and um, connect with the front, of the front of the fleet. Now, what's coming up? This is the state of play on the 14th or 15th of, of, uh, of February, so things are gonna be heating up for Valentine's <laughs> Day. Um, we expect them to have sailed up by Japan, down through Guam, and then sort of be approaching uh, Micronesia. So they're gonna be somewhere in, in this area. And you can see that the, there is a massive high pressure zone again, strong trade wind conditions, and uh, really, frankly, easy, stable sailing uh, until they get to the doldrums. We'll see what happens then. Okay, but plenty of things for the sailors to start smiling about if they're not enjoying these incredible, tough upwind conditions that we're seeing at the moment. But one Which, sailor... frankly, nobody would. You know, <laughs> no, of course. nasty, horrible. Well, you certainly knew what you signed up for when you yep. came along to the Volvo Ocean Race. And one sailor that's wearing a very big smile at the moment is David Witt. He had a fantastic leg fall into his home port, surprised everybody with that superb maneuvering through the light patchy winds and the doldrums. And he's lining up to hopefully do it again. Just before we came on air, we caught up with him and talked to him about what sort of things we need to be aware of following the race and what's the mood like on board. The, uh, we're in good shape here. We can, the whole fleet can see each other. So apart from, uh, apart from Brunel, Brunel having a few legs on the rest of the fleet at the moment, I, can probably, I could probably hit a three iron and hit Defong and uh, Matt Free, no problem. Well, let's talk about your positioning right now because there's been some big speculation as to what's lying in wait when you guys get round the tip of Taiwan. From where you are, a little bit more to the north, it looks like you're going to be sheltered for longer. Is it where you want to be? Yeah, it's exactly where we want to be. Um, while the wave, while the sea state isn't great here, it's going to be a lot worse for the guys sort of further out on us. Uh, they're going to get over the shelf and get a bit more sea state, so we're hoping to be a bit quicker for a bit longer in flatter water. Uh, and a Less time in the 35 knots, which is going to, you know, due from the acceleration off the headland. So, pretty happy where we are. And you guys are just coming off a fantastic performance in leg four, leading into your home port. But the build-up for this leg, obviously some last-minute changes. Just talk us through uh, Marcus Ashley Jones and how it was that he came to be on board the boat. We flew in my mate Grant Warrington, who's going to do the rest of the race with us. And uh, they took the boat out the, the day before the race to test some, sign off some and he got caught in the stern line and uh, nearly broke both his legs. Luckily, he just snapped his hamstring in one leg and, um, you know, he had some stitches in the other, but he was really lucky. But unfortunate for us, he couldn't come. He's uh, got to go home for surgery. So uh, Marcus sails with us on the 100-footer, sailed with us for the last few years, so he got the SOS call. About the only place in the world that could still get on a flight to make it in time for the start was Australia, so that was lucky. Well, very lucky indeed. And how's he fitting in? Because this is a bit of a, a rough ride straight from the off. I've done 15 home, Hobarts with him. I've never seen him throw up, but he was in the fetal position last night, sort of bringing up his lunch, which I found very surprising. So maybe the VOR 65 is a bit more of a rough ride than the 100. I think we can understand that. and I'm sure we can forgive him for needing to find his sea legs in the first 24 hours. Um, I'm just wondering if you could give us an update on your... J0, coming into Hong Kong, uh, you had a bit of an issue uh, where it went overboard a few legs ago. Where are you now with your equipment, your sail inventory? How confident are you with the setup you've got right now? Yeah, no, really good. We got, our, uh, we got another J0 sorted, so we're at full strength with the sail wardrobe. Um, and, you know, I, you guys probably saw the start. We had a really nice start. And uh, there's an air of confidence on board we haven't had for a while, obviously because of the result in the last race. So... Um, Everything's calm and good here on Scallywag. We're, we're looking 
I know he won't shock you, Niles, because you're a supporter, but that mate of yours, <laughs> Conrad Coleman, we're ready to shock him again. Well, I tell you what, let's, let's start pulling on your local knowledge because you really did shock everybody on the approach into Hong Kong. Now leaving, give us an overview for what's coming up, what's this leg going to look like, help the fans to understand some of the challenges laying ahead. Yeah, um, well, as I'll see, we're all going to attack um, shortly and be heading almost 180 degrees away from Auckland, which just goes straight against my entire grain of sailing, but Libby's the boss, so if it doesn't work, it's her fault. But um, the whole fleet will do that to get her into this uh, north northerly pressure. But then uh, I think it's all going to go pretty soft again, and you might see a bit of a restart in a few days. So, uh, as always, it'll be uh, who, who manages the doldrums in a week or so that'll uh, will get the jump through the other side and be quite hard to catch after that. Well, the last time in the doldrums, you played the winning hand, but do you feel you've played all your options now? Does everybody know the tricks? Clearly, you've never played cards with me, Niles. Everyone keeps an ace up their sleeve. Don't worry about that. All right, David, with that, we will leave it there. Good luck. Keep pushing hard. We'll keep an eye on you. Always good to talk to you, Niles. David, we're on board Sun Hunkai Scallywag on top of the world at the moment after that fantastic performance in leg four. Something that he is looking to repeat as the fleet unwind their trail all the way down to Auckland. Now, we're going to have a lot of information in this race to bring you. And let's start with a fantastic competition. Garmin have donated one of their fantastic Verb 360 cameras. You will know this camera. You will have seen the 360 footage coming off from the boat. Tomorrow, we will be launching our competition. More details about how you can win then, so don't go anywhere. It'll be the quick fix in the morning, then at 1300 UTC, another daily show. See you then.